Welcome to the Green Wisdom Health Podcast with Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis, where you will learn about natural solutions to common ailments. And now, here are your hosts, Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis. Hello, and welcome to this week's show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And we are Green Wisdom Health, home of your low-cost lab work, here to uh, educate you and entertain you with another interesting, fascinating show. And... um, we are going to talk today a little bit about going down the rabbit hole uh, with keto and other health issues, and we've specifically named it this because we have a very special guest with us today from locally here. I know you guys think that we only help people across the United States, but we actually have a very large patient base in Longview, Texas and the surrounding area, and um, she's been a patient of ours for about almost five years now and um, you know many of you I think you hear us but you don't really know whether or not what we tell you is true or if we're just the same as somebody else or we're just tooting our own horn so I do that all the time I know you toot your horn Um, but we thought we'd bring you a live person that is unpaid to come in here and tell us all about (laughs) her experience and what she went through and why she chose us and why she continues to choose us So with that being said, we'd like to welcome Amanda from Troop, Texas, to tell us all about where she has come from, where she's going. Well, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. And yes, I have to let the audience know I'm not getting paid and nobody coached me on what to say. And so I'd really wanted to come in and talk about my experience because I think it's important to know the patient perspective and how people can really benefit from doing their lab work consistently, sticking with uh, good uh, supplements that really help your, your uh, supplement your diet. And so it's just been a wonderful process for me. So when you say supplements, so do you really think they are different than what you just pick up somewhere? Absolutely. I mean, I I was telling y'all before I grew up taking Flintstone vitamins on those little orange vitamin C's that were chewable. I loved those. I would would take extra. (laughs) It's so hard for us to get kids off of those too. They're like, they're not the gummies like we're used to. Yeah. And so we we grew up with vitamins from Walmart or wherever. But, um, you know, the, the thing about what y'all are doing here is that the supplements are obviously high quality and we can prove that through the lab work. And so it's, it's just very important for me to have that proof and to be able to, to see progress being made. And, and, you know, without going into detail about what's on your lab, can you give us a uh, rough idea of why you came in to start with and kind of where you are now with things? Sure. Well, I, I really, um, heard about y'all because at one point y'all had a local radio state uh, show mm-hmm. a couple years back about five years ago mm-hmm. and I'm a big fan of talk radio and so I came across the show I heard what Dr. Lewis was saying it made a lot of sense and uh, I started to listen consistently then I decided I'll go on the website I'll fill out the health survey and I'll just see what happens and I think that the, the thing that really sold me on the process is that there's this lab work that we can prove or we can see what's going on. And so I had my lab work done and got a baseline and and um, met with Dr. Lewis and felt very welcomed. And and so we just, uh, I, I started taking the recommended list of supplements and, and just went from there and stayed consistent with it. And then the second lab was what was really exciting when I had that second lab. Why were you consistent? Um, what was your motivation? I guess I'm a rule follower. And so I, I like to see if some, if a process is going to work. And so as I was taking these, you know, it's sometimes there's a lot to swallow, literally. And it's, <laughs> and you, you have, we've done better at that. We've, done, we've changed some products. So things are better. So not so many, but, uh, it, you know, it, I just wanted to see this. I wanted to get to the second lab, the six month checkpoint, so to speak. And, and I uh, just wanted to see what would happen. And some numbers moved, and that was exciting. I made progress, and uh, and so I just continued on. And when she's talking about numbers moving, you know, when we do lab panels, our minimum panel is 12 different panels, which is uh, what we call our comprehensive panel. And we're looking for things like um, viruses that are underlying in the lab, uh, digestion, liver enzymes, three-month blood sugar to see if you really are becoming a diabetic be- before 
it happens, or if you are one, many times have back back out of it. Um, high risk of heart attack or stroke. Um, that's something that's not run very often. We run stored iron. We run vitamin D. Uh, five parts of your thyroid looking for optimal levels, and maybe Amanda will talk a little bit about that, and uh, cortisol levels. So were any of those things that you remember? Absolutely. I mean, just about all of those things. <laughs> so, I, I didn't really come into this with a lot of major health issues, but I could see some things starting to happen and some things on the horizon that could cause problems. And I know I have a family history of uh, heart attack and stroke. And so um, what I found out from my lab was that my thyroid levels were off and I was at a, you know, relatively high risk for a future cardiac event, which was you know, quite scary and just cortisol issues. Um, while I, when I started, I was in the middle of a PhD program and uh, just caused a lot of stress. So see, she's actually smart, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, not, not only uh, very intelligent, but very educated. Yeah. And, you know, maybe that could lead you into what it did to your cortisol, all yeah. that excess stress. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I would not have made it through that PhD program without the, what was it, the 5-MTF or the 5-HTP? Yes, yes. Yes. And then the panothenic ass. I don't know what y'all gave me, but I just could not have done it because I, I get pretty stressed out pretty easily, as my sweet husband can attest. And uh, that really helped me. 5-HTP is the peace of God in a yes, bottle. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. And, uh, you know, not to say I didn't feel stress along the way, but that um, made me stay focused on what I was doing. And it really provided um, without a really even realizing it, it provided me some just s- steadiness. I don't know how we to. tell people it helps you flow instead of hanging on to the sides yes. of the river as you're going down. It just helps you flow. Yes. And when you're in a big project like a dissertation or, you know, a medical residency or something like that, it is, it is a high stress, long term marathon. And there's small breaks in between big projects. And you really need something to help with that. I know not everyone faces things like that, but it, it definitely helped me. Um, I, I was looking back at my labs in preparation for today's podcast and looking at my, my cardiac, what is a C, C-reactive protein. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of speaking the language now that I've been doing this for about <laughs> five years. But the... Uh, you know, I, I came in, you know, some some risk for cardiac event, and then I could track it. As I got closer to my comprehensive exams, which is the big exam in my doctoral program, two day exam, you you cover everything you've learned in the past two years, you know, very stressful. I could see um, six months out, and then a month before I took that test, my card, my C reactive protein jumped way, way up. And my cortisol was, you know, just, and so, um, you know, you have to adjust. Just because you get on some some supplements doesn't mean that things are automatically going to improve, but you've got to keep track of things because life changes. And so you get on it for a while and you feel good and you say, okay, I've had enough. No, you can't do that. You have to keep going because life keeps changing, whether it's stress levels, environmental factors, toxicity, all of these things that we come in contact with. Um, this is going to keep happening. And so you need to keep account of your health. I think Dr. Lewis puts it really good when people say, oh, this is all going on with my lab. Well, which couple of things can I pick out? And he always says, well, how about we just put a little bit of gas in your vehicle? How far do you want to go? <laughs> Yeah. So where would you like to run out at what place? And that's kind of what it is with met with the natural medicine. It's uh, you have to keep putting it in mm-hmm. because I think people are so conditioned to medications that it. Um, I don't want to say, you don't want to say heals their problem, but at some point it it looks like it's fixed because of a, it's a medication when that's not necessarily true. But I think they think that with natural medicine, it's like it should be fixed at some point, and I stop. It's like, well, yes, some things get better and you don't take as much right? or it changes. But just like you said, it's kind of like eating food. It just is a different terrain and different products. And you just keep progressing. You just keep mm-hmm. getting better and better. Right. You're, you're supplementing your nutrients and, and the need for that never runs out. And I, I'm not saying that just to say, hey, you got to buy more products here. But, you know, it's it's really something that makes sense if you if you think about it from a non-medical model and you think about it from a nutrition model. And so if you look at um, you know, supplementing your diet, 
Uh, yeah, there's there's supplements that I've gotten off of because levels have improved or, or whatever the case is. But but then there's also things that I've gotten back on because, because life changes. Life changes. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. well, that's, that's one of the points I always try to make is, is people say, well, what do I have to take? I said, well, you know, it's up to you. When I go to Montana, I fill the tank up. I don't go with just one gallon of gas. Some people say, well, don't you think my body's going to get confused with all this? And it's like, well, if you eat a sandwich and you know drink something and your body is smart enough to to sort it out and i say things in a real smart aleck answer uh just to make people think about it differently we actually did a podcast on stevenisms and i didn't get around to many i have a whole book full of them, folks <laughs> uh, and it's not to be a smart aleck it's just to help impress upon you the need and, and there's this preacher that comes in here and i just love him dearly and he says well doc how long do i have to stay on this i said how long do i need to read my bible and keep putting money in your offering plate and he says okay that was harsh so to the degree that you want to or can and that depends you know i take less than janet does um and she says, well, you don't need another new gun. You're spending money on supplements. And I said, you don't need another pair of shoes, at which point I knew I had messed up and I'm still apologizing for so. Big mistake. Do it to the degree that you feel comfortable, whether it's two or three things or many, many, many things. It's, My degree I feel comfortable at is filling the whole tank up and carrying a spare along just in case I run out. <laughs> I take everything. <laughs> well, both Janet and Amanda take a lot more than I do. But, you know, that's why women outlive men 7.8 years on the average. Well, we have to take care of y'all, so we have to take more to keep up with that. That's right, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so with your Thyroid, you did mention that you had some thyroid um, issues. Um, You know, a lot of people think, well, I don't feel great, but my doctor has told me my thyroid is fine. Um, Did that happen to you also? Were you ever told your thyroid was fine or had you ever had it checked before you came here? I don't think I ever really had it checked. I I thought maybe that's an issue because of, you know, how the symptoms of a low thyroid, I don't even know the correct terminology, but how the symptoms of a low thyroid were described. And so I was draggy quite a bit. I remember as a kid, you know, we, we'd go to town. We lived 30 minutes outside of Tyler. We'd go to town to shop, you know, grocery shopping. And I'd get so tired just, you know, as a 10 year old, get so tired. And uh, so I guess I've always been a little draggy, but, um, you know, just uh, Dr. Lewis could probably speak more to my thyroid journey that I could, but um, I've noticed a, a difference in the way I feel. But also, uh, it was important that I realized that the thyroid affects so many other things, just like the gut affects so many things. And one of the things that's the major thing that I've learned from this is that everything is speaking to other areas, you know, it's all interconnected. And once you realize this, you 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 start to understand that one pill doesn't fix all. There's there's things going on uh, that you don't know about that could be affecting things that you are are quite obvious to you. So. And and that's another thing is like a lot of people say, well, I've had this since I was young, so it's normal. Well, just because you felt bad all your life or haven't had the energy yeah. doesn't mean it's normal. It may mean you've really had a problem all your life. Right. And when we're looking at thyroid, we're looking for where the numbers are optimal, not just in range. So if your doctor's told you that, hey, you look great, which is usually a TSH, which is not even the thyroid, it's the thyroid stimulating hormone, um, you might want to consider getting some different parts of the thyroid run. Because when we run it, it's the free T3, which is the big one, and making that optimal that actually boost metabolism, weight loss. I think Dr. Lewis is going to talk a little bit about keto. Um, you know, Hashimoto's, that's a whole nother subject. But um, there's things that can be really wrong with your thyroid that's creating all kind of things, including risk of heart, heart attack or stroke. It does increase that too. So well, it, it can be your toxic load. And, and, you know, there's research now that says we have 10,000 times more plastics in us than the heavy metals that we've never taken out. And so like Janet and Amanda do, they take a lot of supplements long term. So you up your nutrient level so your body can actually increase the different detoxification pathways. And it doesn't matter that you're taking a lot out every day because you have to realize that the environment's actually putting these toxins back in. So the net gain 
uh, a decrease in your toxins is actually pretty small. So that's why time and consistency means uh, so very, very much. And that's why some people are very reluctant to lose weight because the fat cells don't want to let go of the toxins unless you have the detoxification pathways going through and you know i just gained back 14 pounds just to experiment with some other things to see if i can create some weight loss there uh, <clears throat> we we were pretty um blessed or uh, we got on drew manning's podcast the fit the fat to fit guy and he's i think he is the number one guru on uh, keto and what you should do there and actually the reason we named this podcast down the rabbit hole was because uh Amanda said she thought I did a really good job on that podcast, and actually I didn't because I felt bad. But uh, so she is the one that started the rabbit trail and rabbit hole uh, stories. But keto is a big thing. I think everybody should do it. I've been a f- big fan of Atkins Paleo Primal Keto. I really prefer keto over paleo, but there are some differences. Uh, some of the things that we hear about, though, is, well, if you have these symptoms, and there are symptoms that are associated with getting well, uh, and, you know, you can take more salt, and they, they recommend the Himalayan, uh, the pink salt, uh, because of the mineral profile. <clears throat> and then they recommend uh, different electrolytes. Now, there are many, many differences in what you're taking. We use things called reacted magnesium. Uh, reacted multi-mins because they actually chelate them to different amino acids, which makes them much more bioavailable so your body can absorb it. And that's another thing some people don't understand. Just because you put it in your body doesn't mean you're absorbing it because we have a gastrointestinal problem, you know, with the leaky gut. And we were having a great experience with some new products that actually help to heal leaky gut, which actually helps to heal leaky brain, and you get better brain function by getting better colon function, which should tell you about, well, never mind. I don't want to go there. I'll get in trouble. Well, I know some people have talked about when they go on a keto diet that they start getting, like, irritable bowel type stuff. Is that product you're talking about something that would help with that? Uh, Very much, and... Even though I love Drew Manny, I think what he's doing really is good. Um, and I, I think for those that have other issues, that the best thing they can do is get the lab work and reveal the issues because you're starting to mobilize. You're, you're eating high fat, and so you're going to mobilize that, begin to burn it, but you have to have good digestive enzymes, and, and that's not always easy. And it does matter where you buy them. And you have to watch the liver because if the liver doesn't have all of its 11 detoxification pathways going through, you can get a clogged up liver. And you can see that with your liver enzymes. The AST and ALTs will begin to go higher and higher. And if you don't do something about it before it gets bad, you get what's called non-alcoholic fatty liver. You don't want that. Um, so, and, and muscle cramps and people say, well, I have Hashimoto's. Is keto going to fix it? Keto eventually it's going to fix a lot of things but you have to address these issues so it it's wise i think to watch these things and increase the uh, detoxification pathways <clears throat> we've got a great new product which is 10 times higher in calcium d glucurate than anything we've ever seen and that is a major major uh opening or, or helps the liver detoxify in the glucuronidation pathway so we're getting good, good, good results, and we just started using it. Janet took a bottle home and said, this is for you. She didn't give me a choice, so yes, ma'am, I'm taking it. Well, what we've seen is that it's really increasing uh, hormone function in both men and women. Um, like it, saw, it, it doubled a guy's testosterone in three months. And opened up more <laughs> of it uh, for availability. And it's like, I don't know if his wife's going to say thank you or say cut him off you know he's too frisky now i don't know but yeah they uh it was dhea for a man it was a dhea 25 milligram and then this cdg dim estro dim um and, and the prostatrol forte for the natural aromatase right. inhibitors but people say but i'm taking 25 milligrams of dhea another brand yeah well it's not working because i can see it on your lab not all supplements are equal and sometimes you're taking a good supplement but your body's not absorbing it so and so for women i'm being the guinea pig here because women need testosterone too so i thought oh 
take it on the chin and I'll take it. Hey, if she grows a mustache like mine, I'm moving out. <laughs> we might put Amanda on it pretty soon, too. I'll try. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, men, if you've got a woman, her sex drive has gone away. Uh, this CDG. I'm waiting to hear what's coming. Well, because you got two women here, so go ahead. Maybe I should uh, leave. No, that was going to be good. <laughs> no, I don't have enough testosterone to talk about it in front of women. But uh, once a woman's testosterone comes up, uh, they tend to have a better ability to lose weight, but their libido increases. And I told one woman, I said, when your husband realizes that you're back to the girl he married. I want some Schoenerbach beer and dark chocolate. And he stopped us. He really did at, at a restaurant. So are you Dr. Lewis? I said, yep. He said, I owe you some Schoenerbach and dark chocolate. I said, hey, your wife's a good listener. <laughs> so, folks, these hormones can be altered by opening up these detox pathways. So, the, you know, that calcium deglucurate in a much larger amount than anything we've seen before is so far is working real, real well. So um, with this keto diet, isn't it true they're supposed to eat a whole lot of fats? Is that right? Yes. That's why I said you have to have the the enzymes to do it because most yeah. of us don't have the proper enzymes. And, you know, Amanda, uh, she stuck with us long enough. She used to take one digestive enzyme. We had really good results from it, and she actually won a bottle of it by answering correctly a, a, a question we had on the show. Now we have digestive enzymes that have, what's the difference? I, I think the old one that works so well had like 16 units to digest uh, fat, and the new one has 1,008 units. Do the math on that. So we have better enzymes to digest the fat. The more you digest the fat, then the more the body can start burning fat. Uh, so well, it, isn't it that works. so? That's part of what's wrong when people tell you they are on the keto diet, but they feel like it's not working, or they feel like they're getting constipated and they're belching, bloating, constipation. So some slow moving trains. So Amanda, what made you willing to go from one product that worked to another one? You know, you know she's hung around a long time, and she's been part of our experiment. You know, we're always getting better and more knowledgeable. Well, I mean, I trust you. And so if, if you say you've got a better product, you, you've never steered me wrong before. And so, you know, part of it's just your own, your the, the credibility that I perceive in you. And then, uh, you know, just just the understanding that there's always going to be new discoveries or, or different products come about that, you know, improve on what's been done. And so uh, you, you've got to be open to a little bit of experimentation. And, and it's always nice to have options. That's why they call it practicing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know what's really scary? I'm in here with two really wonderful women, and God, if I knew I had that much power when I was 16, I'd have gotten in trouble. So. <laughs> you probably were in trouble. We probably don't want to talk about it on this show. <laughs> no, nah, it's a G-rated show. <laughs> we do have a couple of questions, though. Um, well, one of them was a commentary i guess from dr lewis about uh vitamin d and how it could help treat diabetes what did you want to tell us about that well you know one of the things i want to make i am we'll get in trouble again uh, oh let's go back to g-rated uh that was scrolling across good morning america vitamin d can help with diabetes and my answer to that is duh i've been saying it 35 years and now all of a sudden after they poo-pooed nutritional supplements for so many years now even Good Morning America is getting in on the deal. Think about it. When, you know, 200 years ago, when we weren't full of plastics and heavy metals, the sun was shining down on you at a very uh, strong angle. You could burn 10,000 calories for energy and muscle while we were out playing with our cows and, you know, plowing the fields. And so in the innate wisdom of the human body, when the sun started going at a different angle because of autumn, the body would go down in vitamin D and say, hmm, I'm going to have less calories because we're going into the season where there's not as much food. So I can take not 10,000 calories, but I have to take 10, 000, or 1,000 calories and actually put it into fat. So we have low vitamin D because sunshine cannot be converted as much because we've lowered our cholesterol, which is absolutely incredibly important to make vitamin D, which is not even a vitamin. It's actually a hormone. Uh, so... All these things is, duh, there's plenty of research that says you have to have this supplement, this supplement, this supplement, because it's not in your food, folks. Even organic food is a very good thing to invest in. I don't care if it costs 
an average of 30% more. It has more nutrition in it and less pesticides. But to function toward 100%, you have to up your nutritional intake, and that has to be done by supplements, and it has to be quality supplements like you want a quality spouse. There are differences, folks. Interesting, as usual. <laughs> I got the look on that one from two women. <laughs> <laughs> you leave us speechless many times. Uh, yeah, I wish that were true. We both I'm have s- similar spouses, too. <laughs> That's uh, why I like you. Amanda's spouse is absolutely <laughs> awesome. I love him. <laughs> um, we also had a question about someone, and you briefly touched on this, but I don't think that they completely understand the answer. Um, they ask about doing the keto diet. Um, but they have Hashimoto's, which for you that don't know what that is, that's an autoimmune problem in the thyroid. Um, does it mess with Hashimoto's or can someone with Hashimoto's do a keto diet or what, what do you, you know, do you have any weird symptoms because you have Hashimoto's? Wow. Can I, can I take my memory pill and remember all that? I think keto diet's fine for Hashimoto's, but there's certain other issues you need to address and the best thing to do is get the lab uh let's find out exactly what's going on and let's address that so you can have better success with the keto diet well you know when you're saying diet usually you're telling the body something's going to change with it and it's going to starve basically or, or change drastically um if you have hashimoto's and it's not in check which a lot of people uh, don't realize there is a natural way to make it in check. We have two products that actually help with that. One's called Olive Leaf and the other one's IG-26. Um, one stabilizes the thyroid and the other one supports the immune system. So um, it quits doing the roller coaster ride that it does on lab with your uh, thyroid panels. So if your doctor keeps running your thyroid and they keep saying, we can't get this right, it's all over the place, and they keep changing your medicine, there could be a really good chance you have Hashimoto's. And so then you try to diet on top of it, then the body already is sick, and then you're trying to make it lose weight too. So it's a really great idea if you get the thyroid under control first and then address trying to lose weight because you really may have some issues and then you're not going to know, hey, is this keto doing this to me? Is this my thyroid being wacky? Um, They would make that correlation, but it would not be a causation. Right, and that's what you know. Keto's good, right? Keto for, for is for most good. people, and we just we don't want you thinking, "Hey, it's there's something wrong with this diet," because it actually may be something wrong with the thyroid that needs to be right fixed, also. So you know, not to say too much out of place, but uh, Amanda's thyroid, she didn't have Hashimoto's, but it's definitely gotten better over the years, whether she feels it or not. Do you have oh, an yeah. opinion about that? Yeah, I, I I definitely feel better. I think. I, I mean, it, to me, it was subtle. But and so the only mm-hmm. really uh, the only way I could track was just through the labs. But um, yeah, I'm I'm very pleased with my progress. In fact, last time I had lab, you said, you know, you could probably go a whole year without lab instead of coming in every six months. I may still do the six months just because I like the check. You know, that's a great point because you should mention that about the because people ask that all the time. How many times do I have to run this lab? Well. I think when you hit your sweet spot, that's my term for it, of what you want to take as far as supplements, you've addressed the issues and given enough nutrition so your body could fight its own battles, then the lab work gets less and less important. And Janet and I do our lab about every year. That way, Amanda could go a year, but if she wants to to know more, six months is not certainly not unreasonable at all. I probably should go more, but I'm a sissy and I get stuck and I pass out sometimes when they do that. <laughs> yes, I'm a, I'm that big a sissy, but it's a really good thing. So, yeah, that, that was a good point about Hashimoto's, too. It's like, well, you have a GI problem, therefore you'll have an absorption problem. So it's probably leaky gut. We do need to address that so you can have better success in weight loss, in energy production, in memory, uh, in reversing uh, or helping your body deal with diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. Or people that have uh, digestive problems like a bad gallbladder or no gallbladder are probably initially going to experience a lot of um, concerns when they start doing keto. Yeah, you should have seen the look when she said concerns. Yeah, you really need to know what's going on. And uh, digestive enzymes would be incredibly important there to help digest that because 
without that gallbladder holding the reservoir of bile, then those are the ones that get up in the middle of the meal and rush to the bathroom because it just runs right through. So you really need to have the digestive enzymes. We used to do that for fun. I, I don't know. We're very <laughs> sick individuals. We go to a restroom yes, and go, that one's gallbladder's gone. That one's <laughs> gallbladder's gone. Because they couldn't make it through the whole meal before they had it to go to the It was sick of us, but it was fun. We like to go to the airport and have a beer and talk. <laughs> like, oh, that person's doing this and that person's doing that. And With the like, digestive enzyme, of course. Yeah, it's, and and, and that person needs its sacroiliac adjusted. It's like, you know, I look at them like that. It's like, holy cow, they could really be healthy if they had this nutrition or this kind of an adjustment. But, yeah, I'm weird that way. If they just listen to this show, they would learn so much. <laughs> and speaking of that, if you guys have someone that needs to hear this show, please share us with them. And do not keep us a secret because we like to be passed around. And, uh we have come to the close of another exciting show. I can't believe that 30 minutes flies by. And we want to thank Amanda again for her input and being our guest today. We're thank very you. thrilled. We may have you back. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah, she, I enjoyed it. She's very eloquent, too. Great. Unlike me with all the Stephenisms. So we can have Amandaisms. <laughs> sure. <laughs> But if you have questions or anything that you would like to have answered, please um, join our shooting straight with Dr. Lewis, and he'll be happy to uh, add you to his group and uh, answer questions for you. If you want to get started feeling better, go to our website, greenwisdomhealth.com. Fill out the health survey. We're recommending for this show to do the comprehensive lab panel to see what's going on with your health, and you can get started just like Amanda did. And uh, we'll catch you guys here right uh, next time or next week with another exciting show. You guys have a blessed week. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope in your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.